Dear President Dow, Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. When we watch El Clasico, the match between Real Madrid and Barcelona, not only Spanish people, but the entire football world is thrilled. When Rafael Nadal plays, the entire tennis world applauds. And when the Vuelta starts, all of us want to ride a bike. With their efforts, they transmit enthusiasm, hard work, and dedication. This has an equivalent in the political world. I'm extremely pleased that today we can all applaud the reformist efforts of the Spanish government led by Mariano Rajoy. But there is a lot more to be done. For the good of Spain, for the good of Europe, the Partido Popular needs to win the next general elections. <laughs> of course, it is unrealistic to hope we will simply go, go back to business as usual. Business is not as usual. Business has changed after 2008. We do see sign of recovery, but in a profoundly transformed economic environment. To keep up with the new economic reality, three things are needed. Reforms, reforms, and reforms. First, structural reforms at the national level, including labor market reforms to increase the flexibility and adaptability of our systems. The second, market deepening reforms at the European level, including all measures to deepen and complete the European single market in sectors such diverse as energy, the digital economy, capital and services of all kinds. And third, institutional reforms to modernize our European social model and make them less state-centered, less expensive, and more responsive to the choices of individuals and families. However, man does not live by bread alone, and neither does Europe. In our time, Europe is again faced with the ugly reality of violence among nations and peoples. Putin is trying to go back to the bad old times, when borders were drawn and redrawn based on aggressive military actions. Our Ukrainian friends are suffering the brunt of this brutal strategy more than anybody else. We must stand up against terrorism in the Middle East, in Africa, but also in our own countries. This is the conditio sine qua non to decrease the massive exodus of migrants that is putting European solidarity under strain. If Europe wants to remain the master of its own destiny, it must act together. In fact, the West in its entirety is threatened by these challenges, and I believe that the EPP family should be a driving force offering clear, principled, and realistic answers. The Martin Center also contributes with its share. The Center has been analyzing these developments and anticipating emerging challenges. Of particular relevance has been our coverage of the Russian aggression against Ukraine and its implications for the future of EU-Russia relations. In Ukraine, we are also directly engaged on the ground with a project that brings former prime ministers and other successful reformers from Central and Eastern Europe to the country in order to make the case for structural reforms. Moreover, a major paper on the EU's handling of the Syrian crisis has just been finalized, and shorter papers have addressed the problems connected with the refugee crisis and the integration of immigrants in our societies. Dear friends, we are proud to work shoulder to shoulder with the biggest European political family, and we will continue to work hard in order to ensure that the EPP is always at the cutting edge of economic, political, social, and technological developments. Dear friends, the European challenges are formidable, but so are the efforts of the center-right 
to tackle them. The European Union is a product of our creativity. We imagine the Europe that we want, and we want the Europe that we imagine. That's why it is a colossal challenge, because it depends exclusively on our will. That's also the beauty of it. The idea of Europe is human creativity at its best. We are proud of being Europeans. Let us revive the pride of the European people in being Europeans. United, we are stronger. Unidos, somos más fuertes. Vamos, Partido Popular. Vamos, España. Vamos, Europa.